Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and a little while ago I built this which is a YOLO drive ant weight. And while it's cool and all, it was wildly impractical. I mean, this thing was almost full weight at this shape without a wedge or anything on it. Uh, it didn't drive very well. I mean, it, it could drive in a straight line okay, but trying to turn and it would just fail drastically. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of things that could be done with this. Uh, I, I was building this originally for the intention of getting myself some drive practice, basically building something insanely fast uh, that I then have to try and control, which it is that, it is crazy fast, as long as I can get the turning to work. But it's not gonna really help because the wheelbase is just too narrow. Uh, and you guys pointed that out, but the thing is I don't have the weight to kind of extend that and yeah There's just there's not a lot of good design in here So I want to change this. I want to get something that's a bit more dustpan shaped uh, That's a little bit more like an actual combat robot I think the problem with that though is that I'm gonna have to change up these drive motors I do have some smaller ESC's that I might be able to get to work but uh, we'll, we'll see. I don't really uh, feel like going down a rabbit hole on reprogramming brand new ESCs today. So we'll see what we can do. But I think the first thing to do is to swap out the motors to smaller motors. The problem with that is these motors are pretty good right now because they're only 1,400 kV, which means they're actually relatively slow for what they are. Anything smaller than this, every time you go smaller in brushless motors, you get faster and faster motors. And we don't want that for drive. We want slower motors with more torque. So we probably are going to have to go to a geared drive. But then again, you guys know that because you've seen the title and thumbnail of this video. So I'm gonna stop yammering and get some stuff printed. Short five hours later, we have a chassis, which this thing is uh, interesting. The dustpan design is a little bit more arty than it is practical because uh, this thing's probably never gonna see any real uh, combat. So I just kind of had a bit of a mess around. Tried to design something that was a little bit different from my standard chassis shape uh, and dustpan design. I was a little bit concerned because this thing is absolutely massive. This is not gonna fit the four inch cube. Uh, but I'm probably also not gonna release these files because I don't think it's gonna be all that useful for people. Uh, but it is massive, it is, it's pretty huge for an ant weight. Uh, and I was feeling a little bit bad about that until I uh, measured it up against an old micro dot chassis. And yeah, the micro dot chassis is actually bigger just than, uh, than this new chassis. So I think we'll be fine. We should be able to actually make weight with this. Now, uh, that's all cool and all, but we need the next pieces. So I've already uh, attached a motor and a gear down here. So you can see we've got a tiny little uh, flexible PLA printed gear on a motor. This needs some hot glue around the gear to kind of uh, give it a bit of Loctite. This is uh, redneck Loctite that we're going for here. Uh, and then these get bolted into the chassis. Now, the reason I've done it like this is so I can change my gear ratios on a whim, basically. If I print up a different version of this, uh, then I can change the distance of my brushless motor and then change my gear ratio by changing the connector gear here. And uh, we should be able to get different gear ratios essentially on the fly by bolting them in and out of this slot. So there is a little slot down in the bottom here that hooks into the bottom of this and then there's also two bolts that hold it in down the bottom. But at the same time this also doesn't have a top plate. It's not designed for a top plate right now. If there was a top plate I would actually probably extend this bump here up and then mount the top plate off of that is where that, converse, that sentence was supposed to go. Uh, but so let's take a look at these. Now these are, I think, mod 1.5 or mod 1 gears. Uh, so they're actually pretty small. Uh, and there are bearings in the ends of this. So we've got a three mil bearings on either side, uh, just so that this spins as freely as possible because this thing is going to be crazy, crazy fast. So we want all of that speed to uh, go into moving the robot and not melting plastic because the level of speed I'm assuming is gonna come out of this thing would probably melt the plastic. 
So there we go. That's that gearing stack up, done and dusted. Uh, obviously this output hex, you just jam a wheel on there. I'm not gonna jam a wheel on there right now because uh, I did jam a wheel on there fresh off the printer and it took ages to get off. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty tight once you push it all the way down onto the edge of the, uh, of the gear there. So the only big problem though right now is I honestly thought I had longer M3s than I have. So this M3 is only about yay long. It doesn't make it all the way through this chassis piece. So I'm probably gonna have to print up another chassis piece that's got a cutout in the back to allow a hex uh, nut to go in there so that we can actually tighten this up and don't have this kind of wander out and drop out as we run around. I also need to solder up these um, brushless motors. I've got a pair of these somewhere. Uh, the other one I think is on my tech bench right now. But yeah, none of that can happen until we, uh, we get this guy printed again so that we can actually put a nut into that. And that's gonna have to happen tomorrow morning because it is late at night right now. I'm going to bed. We have new bits. So we have a new version of our mount and this has actually been made so that it can take a hex nut in the back of it just like that. This one is a metal hex nut and that was what it was originally designed for. But I was looking through my stuff and found this guy, which is a little plastic hex nut. Uh, and this is gonna be better because I th believe these are nylon. Uh, so that'll actually grip the bolt a lot better. Uh, they're also a lot lighter too, which is good. But uh, this should fit in here. Only just though, it should be a tighter fit than the metal version. The metal version slides in and out pretty easily. This guy should just about fit in here. And oh, I think I need to clean up the edge of this. Okay, so that is now very deep seated in there. That shouldn't come out ever again. Uh, and we're gonna kind of make sure of that in a second with some hot glue here too. Uh, but we've also got our uh, motor that needs a gear on it. Now this is gonna be a little bit difficult to do because the gear does have a thread printed in it, but it, the threads, the printed threads that I've done, all of them have been a little bit wonky. They will go on eventually, but they just need a little bit of convincing, which is kind of what I've done. And that's on at a slight angle, I think, but we should be able to do that. Also, I should say all of the threads I've printed have actually been in a flexible material. So that probably hasn't helped with that uh, wonkiness in it. So that will hold. Once again, we'll hot glue all of that in a second anyway. Uh, let's do the final fit up here. We should be okay to put some bearings in and get this thing going. So get it to the point. So that's too tight. Back off half a turn, loose, and just a tiny little bit of play. So that's exactly where I want that because that spins nice and freely. Cool. All right, so final step is to mount up the motor, which should just fit one gearing stack up and uh, yeah, I also, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, so we've got two of those now, which is great. Uh, these things are ready to mount up to the robot after of course we throw some hot glue into them just to make sure everything uh, survives basically.
Oh man, this thing is crazy fun to drive. It is twitchy as anything else. Uh, but it's it's so much fun. I mean, it's it's very, very twitchy. It's very hard to get it to go in a straight line. You notch the throttle even a little bit. Like I was, a lot of my testing, I was running within kind of like the central 20% circle on the throttle. Like that was nowhere near top speed on any direction and it was going a bit mental. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you get it up, kind of towards 20% forwards, any minor wiggle on the stick left and right, and you just zoom, you just go straight into spinning around on the spot. It's a lot of fun, it really, really is. And I do need to spend a lot more time with this and get my stick control down, because that's what the whole point of this thing is. Um, yeah, it's, it is a lot of fun. Uh, there was a couple of little hiccups. First, we had the silicon coming off the wheels, uh, so the silicon had to get glued in, because uh, that was jamming the wheels up and or coming off completely. Uh, then we had some minor issues with the gearing, uh, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit, uh, because the other thing that happened was I was browning out these ESCs a lot, as it turned out. There was half a dozen or more times during my drive testing where the whole robot would just like reset, like the ESCs went back to their startup uh, beeping and just completely reset, which is crazy. Uh, Cause this thing at the moment is, uh, it's 160 or 170 grams. It's heavy, it's way too heavy to use as a an ant weight. I was thinking that I could get some of that back by reducing the ESCs from 20 amp Afro ESCs to like 7 amp BL Heli ESCs, but considering that these things have already browned out, probably not a good idea. Um, these are probably going to end up uh, needing a 20 amp ESC, which means that I'm probably gonna have to take weight out of the chassis in some way, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to, have to see about that. I don't think I ever really intend on fighting with this though, but I do intend on getting it back on the floor at some point and running it around and maybe even setting up an obstacle course or something. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, there were some other issues in this as well. And it's related to that current draw. The motors were heating up and actually one of the motors got hot enough that it actually softened the hot glue a little bit and it started to unwind the gear, which then bound up its motor. Also, uh, the hot glue that I used to keep the, uh, the bolts that are the axle shafts in place, wasn't enough of that. The bolts needed to be further through and hot glue all over them to stop those from backing out. So yeah, there's a few different bits and pieces that I really, really need to fix to get this thing to be able to drive for longer than about a minute and a half at a time. Uh, and I think I will be doing that. The cool thing though that I found with all of this is that the gears themselves haven't really degraded that much. I was pushing these things pretty hard. I think I've got about four or five minutes of actual full on drive time out of this. And as you can see, the gears are pretty good. The, uh, the red PLA gears especially, the green PLA flex gears, uh, they look a bit more daggy, but I think that's mostly uh, where there was some elephant footing around the bottom of the gear and that has kind of worn into strands. And then there's also some hot glue kind of mixed into that stuff as well. So they don't look brilliant, but they, uh, they do look all right. And especially, like I said, those red PLA gears, they have uh, survived that whole journey a lot better than I was expecting them to, especially considering how hot all of this stuff got. Uh, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this week. This has been a fun little project. Um, yeah, I, I am enjoying 3D printing gears right about now. Uh, it's something that I'm just kind of wrapping myself, my head around being able to do and being able to do interesting, fun little things like this. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.